I just finished hosting a webinar about AI and chat GPT. Please write me an intro that I can use to set up the replay of that webinar. Wow. Okay. Are you curious about the potential of artificial intelligence and how it can change the way we communicate? Well, look no further than our recent webinar on AI and ChatGPT. Our expert panelists delved into the intricacies of AI and explored the capabilities of ChatGPT, a cutting edge language model trained on vast corpus of text data. From its ability to generate human-like responses to its potential applications in industries such as healthcare and finance and small business, our panelists covered it all. Whether you missed the live event or simply want to revisit the insightful discussion, we invite you to watch the replay and join the conversation on the future of AI and chat GPT. Enjoy. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started in here. <laughs> I can't not. Sorry, not sorry. Um, welcome to today's panel webinar on the AI landscape and use cases for small business. Special shout out to those of you making time to watch this in the future as well. I know that with the Monkey Pod the vast monkey pod audience spanning the globe as it does. It's just tough to find a time that accommodates everyone, um, but we have done our best. And speaking of our best, I am joined today by perhaps the most powerful panel ever assembled on earth. Um, we've got Kevin McGavaro joining us from his um, home fitness studio slash office <laughs> slash, slash daycare slash child's tutoring center slash all of the above. Uh, we've got Brett Fairborn tuning in from uh, Logan, Utah? Layton. So Layton. close. Not Layton. geographically close, but both L's. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he is the something at Crew Tracks. His role's uh, transformed a couple times lately, but he's going to share some real world examples for us. Rob is here from Squamish, uh, Squamish, British Columbia, which I can attest is a beautiful little town with some some great uh, views and perspectives and is famously the filming set for Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, or or maybe Sonic 2, was it? It was Sonic 2, I believe. They just had a shot in there, yes. There you go. There you go. Uh, thanks for, for being here, Rob. And Mr. Scott Martineau um, flew home from Italy specifically for this webinar. He refused to be left out of this panel and wanted to, to make sure he could make it his appearance. So he is actively in transit, but um, felt like, hey, I'm not sitting on the sidelines for this one. You guys can't keep me down. So Scott, uh, thanks. Thanks for being here with us, man. Hey, good to be here. You, me, um, all of us on the baggage plane. Yeah, and I would be I would be re remiss if I didn't mention, acknowledge, and praise my very close friend and uh, Monkey Pod partner in crime, Jade Olivia. What's up, Jade? What's up? What's in going on? OG members and, and not OG members. This Pardon. webinar has been um, shared. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the word indiscriminately far and wide with all small businesses whoever it can benefit so we're glad you guys are all here uh i will certainly uh get into things uh with the the different panelists and shine a light on some more of their expertise but just thanks in advance for for being here the reality is um i have not done a great job personally of keeping up on the different trends and the um, uh, evolutions in the ai landscape uh it feels a little overwhelming because it has evolved rapidly and quick and and things have changed quickly and seem to be like every time I turn around there's you know something some some new layer or piece of information and it feels like if I only pay a little bit of attention I don't know if I'm working with the most current thing so I would love to hear uh just from whoever feels confident like maybe a quick recap or summary of the last couple of months um I know chat GPT is a thing I know that it has sort of emerged as this, uh, as becoming kind of ubiquitous or, or interchangeable with the like AI space. But my understanding is, ChatGPT is just one 
of the different AI tools or one interface for for using AI. Um, who, does anybody feel comfortable like cluing me in on some of the key vernacular here? Yeah, well, I mean, I'll say that Chat GPT is definitely you know the predominant player. I think the most popular player in the in like the text to text AI space or generative space. Yeah. Um, you know, Google just came out with Bard and I was on a wait list for that, waiting for it to come out. Um, and although I think it's going to get better, uh, you know, chat GPT is still, you know, a far better resource for lots of different things. Um, one of the things that Bard just rolled out that, you know, chat GPT three already had was, uh, you know, the ability to write code and things like that. So it's, they're definitely doing a lot to make that chat version or the text te text to text version of uh, AI better. Um, but yeah, chat GPT is still kind of like king of the mountain at this point. But my impression is that like chat GPT works by, by like being fed bodies of information. Like chat GPT needs to like consume copy or or code or content or or other like sources in order to like formulate and find the responses that it gives to people is is that how it, these i'm seeing a nod from scott is that generally how like the ai system is finding and producing information yeah yeah so uh chat gpt is a product created by a company called open ai there we they're, go. they're the provider of an api uh, incidentally, I think if I have my facts right, I think Elon Musk was an early investor. I'm not sure he's in it anymore, but um, Microsoft has put a bunch of money into them as well. And think of them, they're almost, they almost started kind of like a stripe in the sense that they were built really for developers. They had APIs and ChatGPT is really the first and obviously very successful sort of public offering. And to your point, Greg, what chat GPT is essentially, as I understand it, um, and others may have more insight on this, but I think it's essentially um, open AIs, they, their attempts to leverage the massive amount of information they have um, to generate their own highly trained models. So to Rob's point, part of AI is you have an opportunity to take these take inputs and you can train models for you can kind of fine tune models for very specific purposes and so open ai because they have so much data has they've been able to just crush it with chat gpt and do things that many of the other providers who are using their apis haven't been able to do so i think you i think you hit it on the head greg similar probably to tesla and the amount of data that you know one of their advantages is the, the vast amount of data they have in their self, you know, for, for advancing self-driving cars. Thanks. That is helpful. Um, does, so open AI is a company, um, do, and they have provided chat GPT or have worked in, in their product is chat GPT. Um, do they have other products we would have heard of? Like is open AI a company derived from a bigger brand? I know you said Musk was an early investor in this, you know, concept or platform, but like, is this a new on the scene or just an evolution or derivative of something? No, I, I don't know when they were founded, but they um, were in, you know, GPT has had several evolutions and essentially each time they went at it, they were doing two things. They were expanding the amount of data. So I think, I think a lot of their primary sources were internet text. So in some of the early models, they'd have name, they have name for names for each of the models and they sort of versioned them. And, you know, the first version of it would have, uh, and I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but it would have scanned X, you know, um, ultra bytes of, of information. And then yeah. the next version is going to do that times two or that times three. And then obviously they're also improving their models so that they just get better and better at essentially thinking of the way that humans do. So, um, but yeah, I, I think um, uh, it's OpenAI is the parent company and the product, I don't know that there's a name for it. It's just OpenAI. So before ChatGPT was launched, we signed up to use their APIs you, and anybody can do it. You can sign up and essentially get a developer account and then they charge you based on, they have a token based system. So essentially information you send into a given API call, 
they calculate the number of tokens that is for on the on the ingoing and on the outgoing and you get charged you know and it it's continues to get cheaper and cheaper um the more that they develop stuff so um that's helpful and chat is officially fixed i see an immediate flurry of our friends who are on with us uh i as you all know am famously a delicate flower so without seeing the chat for validation there was a small piece of me that was a little worried but thanks uh to melody for being on live with us to mark uh john and prue is starting she prue's on the east coast of australia and is up early starting her day with this convo um open ai owns dolly too yeah. So what are, all right. So what are the other ones, uh, the other, like when people talk about AI broadly, I think a lot of people mean chat GPT, but uh, Kevin, you mentioned Bard, uh, which is that Google? Yeah. That's Google's text to text AI. Yeah. And does it also use open AI, like accessing that, that through its uh, AI or do they have, or through its API or do they have their own? Um... It's their own, it's their own AI. Okay. And what's the one, um, I feel like Bing launched something that was like quickly getting some buzz, but they had, I heard that they had like, maybe there was a screenshot of their initial launch that like had a factual error or something and sort of tanked no, that. that was Bard. Yeah. That so Bard. Bing's, oh, that, Bing went just fine. Bard had a lot of issues. Their, their launch was a big, you know, a lot of people had a lot of negative things to say about their launch. Um, but ultimately, you know, there's, you know, Bard is Google's own AI system, generative text. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Bing is, you know, Bing, well, Microsoft put in like, I want to say $10 billion or something sure. like that. They invested into open AI. Uh, and so they are actually using all the, all the technology from open AI and chat GPT for all of their, uh, for all of their AI stuff. And so they're putting that AI into all their products. So Bing was like the first piece of it. Um, and now they're also putting it into Excel and Word and you know everything else that they have, like all of their main products. Got it. It's really going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah, right, 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 right. So I have also heard some speculation that like AI uh, as like a concept or as an interface is has the potential in some circumstances to replace like search engines, right? Rather than searching Google and getting a list of like URLs in return, you can search, you know, Bing's AI and get the actual answer or the recipe or whatever it is without right. needing to go to the website directly. Y yes and no. First of all, you got to be careful about what's returned because chat GPT and sure. stuff is it's not a fact checker, right? It doesn't know the facts. It's just building something out of the data it has. But yeah, you know, um, there's a going to be a big switch, I think, in SEO and and the way things work with, uh, you know, the the AI and in, in in search, because yeah, it will be building its own information from different sources, right? Sure. The sales part of it, and like the e-commerce, I think it's you're going to be safe, but it's going to be the the people who have built content for marketing, that's going to shift uh, in, in, from what I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You mean like guys like me. Yeah. You know, and to give an example, Google uh, is already cutting back on the number of times their spiders go out and scan the web. They're cutting back on servers like that. They say it's because uh, they want to save energy and in, in the planet. Um, but I think it might be costs involved in there as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that's you, you mentioned like the web crawlers, which uh, yeah, I'm not a uh, coder by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, my understanding is like w the way that like SEO or generally works is search engines will crawl the internet broadly and return back details about websites. And like, that's what, when you search, that's the information it's using to like determine how the re return uh, things are ranked. Um, is AI crawling to gather information or are is someone making a determination as to what information gets fed into the machine for AI to draw from? Like, didn't, I guess that's what I'm trying to ask is like how, what information or library of like language or human input is being considered when chat GPT formulates a response? I think chat GD, GPT has only gone up to 2021. I don't know what Bard's gone up to. They may have more recently, but I mean, you gotta think this is the first real 
yeah. iteration of the platform live where people are using it. So yeah, I can see in the future where you know they're gonna start pulling in more live, you know. But right yeah. now, Prue just, just said the same thing that it's working with information about two years old. It's it's gonna struggle to find things for 2023. Yeah. It's right. pretty much the internet until two years ago. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's what's called like a large data set, right? Yeah. A large data model, large language model. And so it's working on a finite amount of information. Um, but like finite is bigger than we can like, you know, humanly imagine still. Yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> technically finite, but you couldn't read through it individually in the rest of your life or whatever. Yeah, or the, our collective lives. Yeah, correct. Um, okay, so Prue mentioned a handful of other tools, uh, Jasper.ai, Chatsonic, Phrase, AI Writer, Copy.ai. Some of those I have heard of. Um, and I, I uh, Jade, yes? Um, <clears throat> it's so funny. I've been sitting here trying to Google it, which is ironic. I'm Googling instead of chatting. But anyway, I, <laughs> I was curious because I've been seeing a lot of uh, posts on social media about how like bajillions of companies are are in two new tools based on open AI are, are are emerging. And I was like looking for a stat. So if anyone knows, that'd be great. I was, I, I'm sure it's in the many, many thousands, but um, I'm seeing, you know, cause I follow a bunch of like entrepreneur type accounts and stuff. And I'm seeing lots of really helpful posts and like blog articles now that are like, you know, the top 10 AI tools that every small business owner needs and the top 10 AI things that will make your life easier. And the top 10 AI things for parents. I mean, like there's, there's so many now that they can be categorized and segmented because each of them have their own little special niche because like, and that's, what's really cool about it. Cause I've used chat GBT and I, I, I'm not good at it. I'm not a prompts girl. I'm not, I know it's like crap in crap out. So I'm, I'm not really great at it, but it, I would prefer, and I'm looking forward to the emerging of all of these specialized A tools that are kind of like take the open AI and like package it in such a way where I don't have to be smart enough to prompt it. It's just like the output that I care about. But anyway, the point I, being is that there's a lot of stuff. I really yeah. want to comment on that. Um, <laughs> because one of the a big thing that I wanted to share is that I don't think you have to be smart <laughs> to use uh chat GPT. Like I've been amazed at how Thanks. dead <laughs> simple it is. Like it's so easy. So Jade, I would challenge you. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, just making sure my thing wasn't lighting up. I would challenge you to to give it a shot because it is like a, it's it's like a chat assistant for anything in your life. Like I have had, uh, hey, help me write a song. Um, hey, I'm having a bad day. Cheer me up. Hey, I'm writing a blog post. Like it is, it's like a, a chat rep for anything, anything that you want help with, and all this background information of AI. I you know I didn't. Uh, didn't chime in because I don't know all that background information, but I just wanted to communicate that you don't have to keep up yeah. on the state of AI. Chat GPT is so helpful and so easy, easy to use. Just imagine uh, if you had the perfect person to slack a question to for any task you're working on, that's that's Chat GPT. So it, it can write for you. It can answer questions. It can make a list of potential topics. Just Just use it. Just go do it. It's so easy. Um, that's really encouraging because I have also kind of struggled. I don't know. I just mentally feel like it's going to be this whole thing. And so I've sort of avoided like dipping my toe into that pool. Um, but, you know, if Brett Fairborn can do it, obviously the rest <laughs> of us should be should be just fine. Um, yeah. So uh, Cameron asked the question, is this is this all really AI or is that just like a layman's yeah, that's what media is calling it. Yeah, a layman's yeah. generalization for it, right? You, you need to be careful about this because I mean, I've I actually had a, a CRM show up that said that we were AI, and I booked a meeting with them, and I went through it and I said, "Well, what's AI about this?" Right? There's nothing really. Uh, you're not supposed to ask that question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you do have to be careful about it, right? It's not all AI. Yeah, but you know the ones that take our input and give us an output that's different than what we input or what we're asking for that's mm -hmm. in my opinion the intelligence part cool and, <laughs> and i just want to point out that bill like put in the q a and i i clicked answer live because it was too funny he said ask chat gpt the best way to use chat gpt yeah <laughs> well, you can it will tell you like, there's so much like behind that statement um so you know I, i'll just kind of 
paraphrase kind of one of the things that I've done with chat TPT, that is exactly what he's saying. Um, where, you know, and I, I found this from somebody else where it says, okay, I want you, so basically you tell chat GPT, I want you to generate a prompt for chat GPT. Here's the criteria, right? And so the, and as you tell it, it's going to be an iterative process. Here are the three things that I want you to do for every iteration. Uh, one, give me a response to the thing. Two, based on the input, I want you to uh, ask me questions about the, like, ask me questions about the thing that I'm talking about to, to get me to be more specific about it, right? And then three, yeah. give me a better prompt, right? And so it goes through this iteration where you, it just asks you a bunch of questions and you answer those questions until you say, okay, I'm done. And every time that it asks you more questions, it also gives you like an updated prompt uh, so that then you could take that prompt and then put it in chat GPT and gives you, you know, more stuff. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things you can do there. John, uh, John just uh, added that as well. He said, you can ask any question and then add, please ask any questions needed to clarify and chat GPT will like engage with you to extract the, the or solicit the details it needs. So that kind of segues into a question that I had on my list here for you guys. Um, my understanding, and this sounds like you have validated it for me, is that you there are like you're you're engaging with a an, a, a bot of some sort to like ask your questions, and it will produce information from this large data set. Um, the question or the input you put in, I've heard it referred to as a prompt. Are there tips or best practices for crafting the prompt? Brett seemed to say like, just do it. And, and like, it'll it'll like, you know, impress you. But I've also heard from people, the way you phrase things really informs like what you get back in response. So have you guys had any like learning along the way in terms of better ways to write prompts or like the style of prompt to write? Or maybe you just have to wait for it to ask you questions. I'm, I'm gonna start by doubling down a little. Really right? just go, just go do it. <laughs> but with that said, um, once you try it and you get a response, if the response isn't quite what you were looking for, like Kevin said, it's iterative. You can then say, actually, what I what I intended to ask was this, or I didn't really want, I don't want an example that's in this uh, industry or, you know, whatever it is. And you can, you can craft the prompt as you go instead of knowing what to input in the beginning, you know, um, but like a, a great tip to to more directly answer your question is you can tell chat gpt who you want it to be so i i want this written in a shakespearean style or you are the marketing director for crew tracks or uh you are a news reporter and so you can kind of guide it for the the tone that you want um mm -hmm. or, or you know poetry or whatever so if you just go in like you're just chatting with another person you're going to get kind of that kind of response back but if you go in and 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 give it you know, certain parameter, parameters of use British English or whatever you want, those tips will then, or even like pretend to be Jarvis, you're Jarvis, I'm Tony Starks, right? And it will, it will talk like Jarvis. So it's giving it a role to play can be helpful to get the output that you want. So like I wanted a press release. So I said, you're the director, you're the marketing director for Crew Tracks, right. write a press release focusing on these two topics and make it 750 words long. That's it. And then I got it. I edited a little bit. And I'm done. Or you're you're my target user with these set of criteria. Tell me, you know, your problem statement for whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Um you can ask it to give you like, you know, if if this is a target market that they're like, you know, you can describe your target market and ask it like, you know, what are the common problems that they have? And it'll it'll start spitting things out. Uh there was a couple of times where um you know, like I asked it for very specific, you know, like I'm going to write a post about X, Y, Z, uh, you know, give me like the top five things or top 10 things in this. And it would list things out and like inevitably there'd be like one or two in there that I was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. I hadn't thought of that one. Like I, I wasn't thinking about that one. I would have totally left it out of this article. Yeah. yeah and, you know, in terms of writing prompts, you always, you know, the best way I think about it is you, you, you want to give it as much information. Think of it as your junior writer. You give it as much information as you would if you're hiring a, a copywriter and saying, I need you to write this in this style from this. And in, you know, the best way I found is 
put in quotation marks the things that it you want it to use or pull information from, like starting with this information or you know some things I go rewrite this and then the tone of Greg Jenkins of Monkey Par Pod and in quotation marks I put what I want it to rewrite. If it's got information on you, it will rewrite it in your tone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have content out there from more than two years ago, so I like yeah. to think I like to think it can it can maybe it'll maybe it'll do the um, what is going on. Oh, uh -huh. members, Greg, it's it's, it's gold. It, yeah, it's gold it's, for that. If you right. if you have blog content that you know is a few years old, but it's worth mentioning again, and how can I write a new blog post that's fresh about this? Just tell Jet Chat GPT to write it, and it will find your blog post and pull from that but also pull from the rest of its language model to add in. I mean, the stuff that it comes up with, it just constantly blows me away. That's like, I think I'm a pretty good writer, um, but uh, chat GPT comes back with stuff and I'm like, Oh, I love that. Thank you. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> well, that, that plays into some of my apprehension is that I like writing, right? Like I enjoy uh, putting my personality into the stuff that I put out there, but as with automation, this doesn't have to be, you know, impersonal or cold or rigid or whatever. You can you can obviously still customize it or tell it to write in a specific tone. Do you think, do you think that I could say write this in the style of Greg Jenkins because you have so much effing content out there? It's ridiculous. So I could just be Greg. Je I mean, I'm I I what I'm hearing, yeah. What I'm hearing Greg is you don't need me. Now. You don't you don't need me anymore. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I think we need to do a we need to do a smackdown. Yeah. <laughs> Jade Jade and copy you know Chat GPT versus the We're original. Both so nerdy though, it's so great. <laughs> and Scott, you look like you're dying to chime in on this prompts conversation. You're like, what do you? Uh, think? Well. I do have a couple thoughts. I think one is just specificity and concreteness. In my experience, it, it helps a ton. So the more, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, you, you can give, for example, hey, write something on this topic. But we found when we were building Copy Generator that being able to articulate the problems of the target customers really helps the output, right? So if you can say, and, and we're writing to a, you know, to a, and then who it is, right? We're writing to, uh, first time home buyers who struggle with these three problems. It just, it, it tends to give a lot more um, rich response. So that's one thought. And then, um, you know, one of the surprises that we had is in, so when we built copy generator and we started that project about a year ago um, and we didn't, we didn't anticipate this, but the idea generation around, so one of the things we do in copy generators, we have people, uh, describe their target customer for the reason I just shared so that we can feed that into the AI models. And um, we found that people got almost as much value in doing kind of what Rob was saying, where, you know, you put in a couple problems and the AI then sends back three or four other problems. And you, and it, you, you as the business owner, this is for business owners specifically, you start to realize and really flesh out the personas that you're speaking to. And I think we all know in content and writing and marketing, Entering the conversation going on inside your customer's head is one of the most important things to do. So, so I think that's really fun. So yeah, concrete and actually, there's sort of a there's there's sort of an interesting exception to that. But I but the, the specific idea is, is to be concrete and as specific as possible. I'll also say that AI is probably most amazing to me in the creative aspect. It's like when you're asking it to produce abstract, it actually does a fantastic job. So. If you want to play around with song lyrics, um, you know, write lyrics to a song about a, um, you know, a, a marketing guru who's nervous about AI taking over his his unique writing style, and we'll have an entirely custom song written for Greg. But that makes you know that makes it really fun. Where all of a sudden now you're sending an email out that has a little chorus to a jingle of a song, and that's that's unique stuff that people aren't seeing every day. Well, for the record, Greg already has a custom song. You can find it at gregsamazing.com. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I was saying. We're stepping on Jade's toes now. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. This is, so, but is so that Jade or is that AI? Jade. <laughs> um, for, I just for had to anybody... check if that URL was legit and it is. Okay. All right. Go on. Yeah, no, it's legit. <laughs> um, for, for anybody who uh, isn't familiar, Copy Generator is a tool that uh, Keep has built for Keep users that um, couples AI technology with marketing best practices to produce content for marketing plays. 
So landing page content, email series content. Um, we uh, on the Keep Academy team have done a series of events. One was yesterday where we walked people through using the copy generator tool and then walked them through setting up the automation for it. Uh, but that you guys can check that out. It's plays. If you're a Keep user, you can check that out. It's plays.keep.app, A-P-P. Um, and Scott is has he, and his brother Eric have been sort of the brains driving that. Um, I'm curious. I was going to ask Scott if there is if there are plans in the future to add things like tone or like add you know prompts or specifications for like how you want that copy tailored. But I realized yesterday you you have added the ability to create multiple personas, so you can you know set up your landing page copy for persona A, and then you can go through the series again and set it up for persona B. So if, you're, if your business serves completely different audiences with completely different needs, you can use this tool to produce copy tailored to those specific personas, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, there's a ton that we can do that we haven't yet, but to just leverage some of the advancements in chat GPT, the benefit, as you pointed out, Greg, is that once a customer goes in and gets their persona set up and they go put the details in for, you know, their webinars, their lead magnets, their company details, that kind of stuff, it makes it really easy for us to help them generate prompts that can then yeah. be fed into chat GPT. And it's not like, I, I don't, I think Brett's point is great. Chat GPT is not really hard, but you do, you do kind of have to know what you're asking it to do. Right. And so that's why I'm excited about what we can do there just to take what take any work that's already been done and leverage that to make life a little bit easier. When I was getting ready for this uh, webinar, I, I had a thought, Scott, and you know, this is something that might or might not work in the future, but chat GPT in essence could be used to create campaigns. All it is, is a programming thing and thinking through. And if you just went, Hey, I need a campaign and keep that does this. It takes in somebody's form on lead magnet. It emails them, da, 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 create it for me. And it really, in effect, could even just lay out the, the facts of it and then go build love it. it. Yeah. I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, HubSpot, HubSpot did a cool, um, they call it chat spot AI, I think. And it's essentially kind of like a command line. That's not the right word, but you basically chat into it and it, but you tell it to do things like add this contact and build this report that shows X, Y, and Z. Um, but I love the idea of text, a text description of a campaign that gets generated. That sounds like a really fun hackathon project, <laughs> Rob. Um, if you want to come, if you want to come hang out at the next hackathon, that would be fun. That's a brilliant yeah. idea. Let's let's make it happen. Um, I have a a question from Desiree here, uh, and 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 maybe me me as well. Desiree, Desiree, on behalf of Greg, uh, how does a business protect their content from being used by GPT as someone else's work? Kind of like on the internet. Yeah, right. That's that's, yeah. that's what I'm afraid the answer is. But like, does it discern between like proprietary IP or or any information out there is is fair game? Uh, and that might be what Scott was saying or, or someone was saying in terms of the response, or I think Rob said it, that the response isn't like vetted. It's just formulated from the information that it has. So there may be factual errors. There also may be plagiarized information in it, right? Yep. Okay. So that is a, a, a caveat for usage of it. But as somebody who produces, you know, patented or, or IP protected information, are there any safeguards you can take to to you know mark your web content as non scrapable? You know, not yet. I not mean, yet. No, nope. I think that's going to be something that comes up. It's a really big yeah. topic in text to image, and I'm sure it will be in oh, text sure. to video yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like there's there's people's artwork that is showing up in you know yeah, right. the, the the text to image AI. You know, play this out. And, you know, if this is all go going into Microsoft Office, you know, what the worker now becomes is not uh, somebody who creates documents. It's who can write the best prompts. And you've now got to have in your 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 work agreements, who owns the prompt? Is it the company or is it the person who's doing it? You know, so, there. you know, day in the future, this is going to be an interesting 
space. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Wild West right now, right? I mean, yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. The, the, this, and this always ha only, only happens every time with technology, right? Like it evolves faster than our legislation or understanding of the ramifications of it. So here we here we are again. Maybe we'll ask Chat GPT how to solve this and see what it spits. <laughs> it, I read an article just recently, you know, that talks a lot about um, how answers and solutions are really kind of becoming cheap, right? They're ubiquitous. They're cheap. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you know the right question to ask, you can get answers to just about anything today. Uh, as we're starting to put, you know, GPT and you know, search together where like you get a GPT answer on the side and you get like a searches on the left. So you can kind of have both at once. Um, you know, the the real way that people are going to be able to differentiate themselves or where the real value is going to be in the near future is going to be in identifying the right problems. Right. Um, so I, I think there's going to be a lot more value in identifying problems and asking the right questions than you know the solutions um well said well, i think yeah, that there's a school of thought that you know every problem we've ever had has already been dealt with in the history it just right. needs to be you know rediscovered <laughs> yeah. yeah and and odds are i have a blog post for it right yeah. so, Weird. pretty good I, pretty good chance um i wanted to ask you guys because very much like campaign building um i get the funnest spiciest ideas from watching other people um, I, I don't consider like campaign or automation or AI to be like nerdy and ones and zeros at all. I think it's so fun and creative and unique, and there's a million ways to skin the same cat. So, uh, in the chat too, I want y'all to participate, but I would love to hear from the panelists. Like, what are some specific use cases where that would be like amazing idea generators, or maybe we could just steal your ideas. Uh, <laughs> but like, what are some cool things that you've accomplished? Uh, maybe Brett, you want to start because you have you your white paper thing was so cool. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks. Um, let me grab a link to it. I'll put it in the chat. Um, I, so... I still want to write a blog post summarizing that, Brett. Uh, at the time I asked, you were like, "Let me launch it first before we get." Oh, going. but yeah, at yeah. some yeah, point, I can I can have I can have a good blog post for you in about sixty seconds. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um. <laughs> yeah. Nailed um, yeah, so this is a, a white paper that we used as a lead magnet. We're still using it as a lead magnet, but we're giving out giving it out pretty freely now. And so we do um, field management software for construction companies, and we interface a lot with their accounting or ERP systems, but we don't offer that. Um, but we're in kind of a unique position where because we have to work with whatever our customers are using, we have exposure to dozens of these accounting systems where most people learn one or two in their career, Right. Right. Um, so I thought, hey, we can offer a review of all these different um, accounting softwares that they don't we don't compete with. However, they would love us to give them some some attention. Right. We can partner with them anyway. So I want to make this report uh, evaluating um, these different software systems. And as part of it, I thought I could survey our internal you know, employees who have exposure to all these systems so that we could rate these different software systems based on all these different categories. So I wrote three questions for a survey, and then I gave ChatGPT those three questions, and I said, write more questions. That's it. And it wrote, I think there's 21 questions in the uh, in the survey, and um, I threw out one that ChatGPT wrote that I didn't like. And I mean, they were just, they were just so good. Um, and it also gave me the multiple choice, you know, five item scale with the wording for, you know, strongly agree, agree or whatever. Um, and that's like, that's hard. That's hard to come up with a whole survey with good categories to evaluate software like that. With ChatGPT, I had it in, you know, seconds and then send it out onto the next thing. Um, so I, I found that over and over again, if I can get something started or make an outline or just sort of have the, the main kernel of the idea or some sort of template or beginning, and then just throw it to right. ChatGPT and it will do the rest. So you produced the comparison of those other systems and then you uh, formatted it with Canva or some some other tool to make it a, a pretty PDF. Yeah. What about like the offer, like the landing page, giving that away or like the other components of that that marketing effort? I didn't use ChatGPT there. Um, I used it in, in, 
the survey, like I said, writing the survey, but then also the content um, around the results of the survey and, and all the data, right? Um, but yeah, I haven't used it much for emails and you're just making me realize it's just, it's just I have to sort of make that mental it's shift. It's a new like, muscle. Yeah, it's a yes, new muscle it's, for sure. It's a, it's a resource that is available all the time. Like every task you're doing, it can probably help with unless you can do it in like 60 seconds or less, right? It can probably help you. Yeah, it's like when I'm fortunate to have worked with the campaign builder since like the day it came out. And so I hear problems and like my brain thinks in terms of campaign builder solutions to them, right? And I think that like we have to train our ourselves to hear problems that chat GPT or AI can can help solve. You know, it's just another muscle to exercise. Um, that's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, shout out to Moisha here with different spreadsheet style tricks uh, where like I'll pick up a formula and then I like I feel like I have this new superpower. And anytime a scenario comes up where I could use that one formula, I'm so excited to bust it out. Yeah. Um, well, I can, can see the, the faces lighting up. I I have some some spreadsheet nerds on here with me. Scott and Kevin were appreciating that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've used oh. ChatGPT went to take an, uh, uh, you know, if I got a spreadsheet and I didn't understand what the formula did, I copied the spreadsheet, put it into ChatGPT and said, hey, explain this to me. It's from Google Sheets. And it goes through and it breaks down the formula so I can understand it. And vice versa, I'm like, I need a formula to do this in chat GPT versus, you know, I yeah. used to search the internet for it. Now it writes me the formula. And if it go, I, if it's not quite right, I said, it didn't give me the right answer. It gave me this. Where's the error. It will actually di diagnose itself and say, Oh, then this is what you need to do. So, I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I was just on a trip with the, with a real estate investment guru and he had, he's like, there's this formula I have not been able to figure out. And exactly the same thing that Rob just said. It's beautiful. Yep. Um, I, I, I wonder like where the, if there are boundaries on that, like, is there anything that's too niche? Uh, somebody in the chat earlier, uh, uh, Chris, uh, shout, he, he said he used it to write some liquid code and that was a light bulb moment for me as well. Like I think of liquid as being this pretty niche language, although it's, I guess it's on, on some bigger platforms, but it's niche within the context of like the keep community. And so it's interesting to me to just, uh, these examples are really helpful. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, well, it's I mean, illuminating. Chat GPT has been trained a lot on programming, right? So well, a lot like of that, the programming yeah. languages out there, you can get it to do something. For instance, you know, I see a lot of times in, in the Facebook groups, people are asking, how do I get this data from, you know, my URL into a field or something like this on my thing? And you can just go write me some JavaScript to pull this field out of a URL and put it into this field on a thing. And it will, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, the other place you can use it, and I haven't done this personally, but somebody else has, they've taken a CSV file, copied the information in there, put it into chat GPT and said, tell me what you learned from this. And it f kicks back information about, like, oh, well, most of the people are doing this and da, 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 da. so, I mean, you can use like trends and like averages. Yeah. Wow, I hadn't thought of that one. I mean, like when I have, like, if I'm working in a new system and I come across something and like, uh, maybe I'm trying to like export or maybe I'm trying to like put something together and it's not immediately obvious like where to do that or how to do it. Whatever system I'm in, I'll say, you know, how do I do X in Y system? And it'll even give out like support directions. I mean, it's. Sweet. it's been this is great. OK, um, what about uh, like the hypotheticals are are, lim are endless? You know, it, it, there's any number of ways that that could go. What about like real world use cases, have you, how have you guys employed this either for yourselves or with your customers? If you're not, you know, if you're not using this in marketing, you're crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because yeah. go on, go on. Yeah. You know, in marketing, 80% of your, 80% of your ads are going to fail, right? This is a generator that is endless in ideas that you can just use it over and over again. And I'm going to put in a link here. This is a, not mine, but another guy put this together. But in 15 minutes in a car ride, he created a whole marketing plan for something. And it gives you ideas of what to do, the prompts and how, what questions is asked throughout there. But it it will generate hundreds of ideas for you, right? In seconds. Yeah, if if idea generation is what you need, this is a solution. I think there are a lot of people who have ideas but struggle with like the execution of it. Um, but I can also see it helping if you have ideas, but you are stuck on the content piece or you're stuck on 
an element of code. Like I can see it helping with with uh, actual execution there. Wh where does it? Um, well, I'll pause there. Kevin, do you have any uh, firsthand examples or or uh, use other use cases that might diversify the the way people are thinking about it? Um, I mean, based on the things that we've already said, not really. So like I said, you can ask it to be your marketing person and refine your prompts so that your prompts can be better. Uh, I use it for things in Excel all the time. Um, I definitely used it for Infusionsoft where I needed to get like some, like I needed to add some code to, uh, I had like a form and I didn't know, like, I don't know HTML. I didn't know how to make the code, the button green. And so yeah. I told it to make the button green and I gave it the hex code and it gave me the code for that. And I put it in and it worked perfectly. Um, so can there's, I just, there's a million things like that. Can, can I just compliment you for wearing a keep shirt, but still calling it Infusionsoft? That's Sorry. it. <laughs> there's, there's, there's something right there with you. perfect about that for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So that's great. Uh, Scott, any other application or use cases you've um, seen that like are, are different or unique ways of putting it to work? Yeah. One that I haven't tried a bunch. I'm curious if anybody else has, but I think translation is becoming a much bigger thing too. So for those who oh. deal nationally, just a really, really quick solution for translation. So that's one. And then, um, you know, maybe just this, this goes beyond maybe chat GPT. I, I don't think you're going to have this, but I was working on a tool that I built for my wife and specific, and sorry for the background noise. We're outside now, but um, it's all good. She, she has a guarantee where she'll set a goal. She coaches moms in parenting and she has a guarantee where she'll help them set a goal and then guarantees that they'll accomplish the goal or she'll continue to work with them for free. But she wanted the goal to be in a very specific format. And so, it didn't take me very much time at all. And anybody on the call who wanted you know, a coach or something like that and wanted to employ a developer, you know, I, I noticed John Braille is on the call. He could probably whip this out in his sleep uh, sure, on a lunch sure. break. Um, but essentially, we just trained a model. So I went in and I gave it you know, six or seven examples of if the mom had entered these things, this is the format that I would want it to come in. So it's sort of like a customized, it's like a customized prompt that you would put in the back end of chat GPT. And then in her case, it essentially the moms, they put a few things in and then they hit a button that says, give me some ideas for the guarantee. And number one, it makes their life easier because they don't have to think about, okay, what's my goal and how do I do it? And number two, it makes my wife happy because the, the goal is in the right format. So I don't know if that's too abstract to latch onto, but that's another, another example that I thought was really useful. She was happy. You know, I got bonus points for that. Yeah, of course. Um, and John said that that's the beauty of GPT, the ability to train it for specific topics. That makes a bunch of sense as well. Guys, I, I happen to know somebody who had chat GPT help them write their vows. Oh, wow. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of bonus points, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you if you need help with any written anything, it's like no brainer. Have Just have chat GPT write it. <laughs> um, okay, so that kind of begs the question, like, uh, are there scenarios where it's not good where like it's famously flawed or just doesn't you know land as well have you used it for anything where uh you 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 felt like it really struggled i i think the main well the main thing that comes to mind for me is what someone already mentioned is um i don't actually i don't know if anyone's mentioned hallucinations yet hallucinations is this term for when chat gpt or whatever you're using makes something up like it's just completely not real at all um there's an example of this on our instagram where crew tracks app app at the end um and i posted an example and one of our our four most recent blog posts were all written by chat gpt and then i edited it afterwards so a big gotcha it, where where chat gpt will fail you is if you don't fact check it and edit it if you just lean on it, it you're gonna crash and burn um, I asked it to write about five companies that were producing construction materials in a planet-friendly, sustainable way, right? And it talked about this uh, bionic building materials out of Germany and how their materials were used specifically on this bridge and like really great information along with these other companies. So then I went looking for logos and information to to flesh it out and fact check a little. Couldn't find anything on that company. And, and so I said, hey, is bionic building materials a real company? And it said, I'm sorry, after further research, that is not a real company. It looks like the information I gave you was incorrect. Wow. Well, I guess I won't write about bionic building materials in Germany then, <laughs> right? It, like so, hold it from a, a hypothetical like example business in a, you know, right. in a, 
a thesis somewhere or something. Wow. It's it, well, and I, I'm surrounded by developers here. And the way it was explained to me, here's the explain like I'm five version. It's a really fancy autocomplete. It just predicts the next word. And it yeah. wrote a great paragraph. But the only problem is the company didn't actually exist. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's fine. I mean, that's a good call out for sure. But the solution is to like check the information in terms of how you're using it, right? If you're just like fishing for ideas, cool, great. Abstract ideas can come from anywhere. But if you're looking for like concrete examples, pun intended, for your construction blog, you're going to wind up with, um, you know, fake businesses floating in there if you don't check. Yeah, okay. Um, one example I saw, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, uh, was somebody was like, it does a good job with like literal, like, like verbatims, but it struggles with like innuendo. Like if you want to write like about a human experience and imply sadness or grief or something, it's, it's gonna, it's, it's a little clumsy in terms of how it like, um, fills in that, that story, right? Have you run into anything like that where it, it doesn't feel human in its response or it feels a little too like on the nose and how it describes something? I mean, I haven't run into it, anything like that yet, but my, my thoughts on that would be, it has to do with the prompting. Okay. Right. What you're putting into it is, you know, gives you what you're getting out. So you need to, um, you know, change that or alter it. And I mean, yeah, I, I was going to say, say this, the, the same. difference between 3.5 and 4 in terms of how it writes and puts things together is massive, right? If you're not using 4, you're, you're missing out on stuff. Yeah, that's what Moisha said in the chat. Uh, GPT-4 is much better with that. Uh, go ahead, Scott. I think it's also more accurate, too. Yeah, no, I was just going to say the opposite of my comment earlier. I, I've seen a lot right. of flops when things are abstract. So abstract input. Abstract input is pretty crappy output. I think if you go concrete input and you're asking for abstract output, you're going to be in a successful place. So like, you know, the innuendo stuff, in my experience with the, the song lyrics or writing a poem, that type of thing, it's actually remarkable. But if you start with a generalized input, that's not like they can't, can't really figure out what you're trying to do. It just has to start making stuff up. Hmm. Hey, can I ask for my benefit and for the audience, uh, Rob, how, how do I make sure I'm using chat GPT-4? Where do I get that? Um, it may be a purchased only, but yeah. um, basically when you go and create a new chat, right at the top, there's a drop down menu and it will show you the different versions that you're using if you go to chat.openai.com. So okay. th this is, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, for someone who has yet to like really play with it, um, how much of what we're talking about is can can anyone access for free? I know there are some that you have to pay for, and then there are others that I think there was like a waiting list for. So like, where is it today in terms of like, if somebody has yet to get started, where do I send them and what should they expect? As far as I know, you can get 3.5 right now for free. free. And then okay. it's 20 bucks a month, I think, for 4.0. Yeah. Got right. it. And, yep. and there's no waiting list. Was there at one point or did I miss? Am I missing? There, there was. And there there is a waiting list. So just to clarify, there is a waiting list for the API for four. Okay. Got which it. is different than the chat. Yeah. The API would help if you were trying to incorporate it into software you're building or something. Yeah. Right. There's also something called auto GPT. And if you haven't heard about this, this is where chat GPT goes and writes its own code and then writes its own bots to re write its own code again. So it, it does it all itself, I and mean, it's this is getting crazy. For sure. mm. for and this sure. is just still we're still like oh, yeah. in one area, yeah. This I always getting... like to mention it when conversations like this that I'm really excited for when the AI takes over, and I welcome <laughs> the reign of our robot overlords. And yeah. I just they have my full support. Go get them, yeah. guys. You know, Brett. Brett, you, has, you, Brett has declared his allegiance. Yeah, yeah. He, he's telling the bots that are listening right now he's cool with it. <laughs> so um you guys i cannot believe this hour like already flew by and we'll we'll go on uh, you know a little bit longer as long as everyone's comfortable and you know we're not going to be unreasonable we respect your time but um aside from robot domination what do y'all think is going to happen next like let's 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 end with future scaping you know like what's what do you think what? I definitely want to kind of just kind of jump on the tail end of what Rob was saying there, right? Like if you want the API, 
right? Like the, the part, like what you use the API for is all the stuff that Jade was talking about, like way in the beginning, where you've got like these very specialized AI bots that you can use for very specific things. So when you get the API and you go into like the playground, you can actually train like your own little AI bot to do whatever it is that you want it to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. So I I think this is what you're saying, but I want to I want to make sure this is a light bulb moment for me. Each individual who has like a, an account or access to chat GPT, it's their install or their version or their like code base for it. Right. So if will mine learn my prompts and like start to get smarter as I engage with it and do my inputs affect what responses Brett gets out or is it like a separate cloned data like version of that uh, code base it's drawing from. Does somebody have their playground they could just screen share an example prompt? That might be the most I, I concrete can. way to share. Oh yeah. In fact, I have a, a great one I sent to Jade earlier that I'd love Perfect. to show you guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. So hey, I Brad, gave you're it... gonna what's sorry, that? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um I gave uh, give me a fifty word summary of key <laughs> style of Greg Jenkins from Monkey Pod Marketing, and it gave me this, which was okay. But I said, make it sound more like Greg Jenkins. And so, oh boy, let me tell you about Keep. It failed right off the bat because it didn't say what is going on. Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I do say absolute game changer though. That's, that sounds but like me. I will say um, here's the history of the chats over here. To answer the question you were asking, I I don't know. And we could just add, let's just try. Do you remember what we chatted about last time? Okay, interesting. Yeah, so I, I think, I mean, like, I, I don't know for sure, but like each one of those chats that you see down the left side of Brett's screen, yeah, like it'll remember what's going on from the beginning of that chat all the way down to wherever you're chatting. And it'll like, and you can reference things back from like things that you first started chatting about. Sure. Uh, then you can reset that or in the next chat, it's not supposed to like know what's going on in the chat above or below it. Perfect. So I don't think that it's like totally isolated. I think that the system overall is still learning from everyone's inputs, but your specific stuff is only there for you. Yeah, so that that that's exactly what I was trying to, to, to get at. Um, within the context of an individual chat, that's how you can ask clarifying questions or get it to be more specific because it's continued in that thread. But if you want to start a new query, it looks like you just start a new chat. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I uh, would okay. stop sharing if I could figure it out. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so yeah. Um, where? What's next? Like, where are things going? What hasn't it accomplished yet that it may? Or, uh, you know, I alluded to like its um, encroachment on like the search engine space as like a potential competitor for finding answers and, and drawing information. What other trends do you see emerging or, or do you hope that it follows? Let's start with Rob. No. I know, I Jeez. know. Uh, it's, I mean, it's such a new space in my opinion that I, I don't think you know, there's a set path you can go for. But I mean, with Microsoft moving it into their office suites, it's now going to be, you know, like I said, how do you create the, the right prompts? Grab this data from, you know, this SharePoint site or whatnot, put it into a PowerPoint pro presentation and, you know, boom, that's, you know, where it's going to go to, I think. And it's going to be, what's that? The pictures and all. Yeah, pictures and all, you know, it, yeah. it's gonna, it's now really the the quote unquote office worker of the future is going to be the prompt creator, right? And building the prompts to pull the information, right? Then, and, you know, as we do that, the machines are going to get smarter and smarter and know what we're asking more and more because the innuendos will be more part of that. Um, I mean, there's a, I'll share the link here. Um, can it, can it take actions for you? Like, it can with auto I want to send an email or something. <laughs> it can with auto GPT. Got it. Okay. So yeah, there's a, a link to a site that actually has, you know, a whole, it, it it's a list of all things that are labeled as AI, right? Whether they are or they aren't, you know, check on it, but you can see all the things that it's doing. I mean, 
I think I saw the other day that the Joe Rogan podcast actually has a completely AI created podcast where they created the content, they created the videos, all of that is all created by machines Fascinating. Right? and put out there. So where it can go is, uh, yeah. We're, we're, My, living in, we're living in the future. You know, it, it sort of reminds me of that time I tried to imagine the ends of the universe when I was in like grade nine science. And I sat there at the table and I can actually remember going, oh my God, I hurt my brain, you yeah. know, because I couldn't get out that big. It's same thing here. It's just the the possibilities are mind numbing. Yeah. Mind. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it could be as revolutionary as the internet. I, I think I envision a very near future. Um, Greg, you know, I'm a VR enthusiast, but uh, I'm imagining, uh, you know, doing a, a lot of, you know, work and recreation in VR and having no idea if I'm talking to a person or a machine, because already chat GPT could, ver could convince just about anyone. If you didn't know, you know, you could chat like a person. So the text is there. Now you just need a voice and a face and that's all there. It all exists. Like all the pieces are already there so that real soon um, there might be a lot of interactions where we just, we don't know. And there might be laws where you have to disclose if you're a human or right. a machine, like right. I, who knows? Oh man. Um, I, somebody commented like training it on your, um, help articles and like your, your tech. Yes. Oh yes. And, yeah. and like creating a, an AI that like serves your customers because you've fed it these common scenarios, or maybe it's monitoring the pulse of a specific, you know, discourse thread or, or Facebook community. Fascinating. Um, Kevin, uh, or Scott, if you're if you're ready, either of you have any trends you're following or anything you hope it accomplishes or direction it's going? Uh, the stuff that I like, the things that I'm really excited about is what it's doing with code. Because um, right now it's able to write code. I know somebody who writes pretty you know complex code where he creates you know APIs for really big uh, accounting software. Um, and he uses chat GPT to write the base code for everything that he's doing. And then he just goes in and fills in the filler. Um, and I, I think it's only a matter of time before, you know, it's able to write the code and then actually take the action of sticking it into the program and running tests to make sure that it works and all those things. I mean, that that's just a matter of time because it's all digital. Um, so those are some of the things, like, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, seeing how, you know, like, you know, three, four years ago, you know, Google was already, you know, had a demo of their voice AI that would call places and set appointments and do things. And the people that they were calling had no idea that they were talking to a yeah. robot. And that was, that was like three, four years ago. Um, so when you combine that with like chat GPT, you know, that kind of stuff is going to come as well. So like the amount of time saving things that AI is going to be able to do for business owners. Um, yeah, I, I think it's not going to come as fast as we probably think it will be just because there's a lot of complexity behind all that. Uh, but I definitely think that both of those things are coming. Yeah, I, video is really interesting uh, for me. I am thinking right now, like as somebody who enjoys producing content, like what what am I doing now that's going to be uh, obsolete or or less you know less unique or less valuable as AI is more relevant and more uh, prevalent? Um, and like things like this, obviously, there are six humans on having a live conversation right now, and like well, that, as far as you know. Are you sorry? Are, are, you, are you sure? <laughs> Which of you is fake? <laughs> <laughs> as Stop. far as as far as we know, but um, so much of the other things that I, you know, am proud of and enjoy producing, I can see AI either replacing or simplifying dramatically. Yeah, and um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it as a, you know, a way of replacing it or you know, making it better. It's like, how do you implement it into the processes that you already have that you like? Sure. Right. To to make really look at it like the microwave. The microwave is there to make you food faster versus reheating it. Right. So that's really it. How do you make this use this to simplify things? And I, I guess. Fair, yeah, fair, I think fair the, distinction. Yeah. The hallucination example that I shared is a, is a great example of how I wrote that blog post so much faster than I would have on my own. 
Um, but I think there's always an element of um, humanity that people just crave as well as, you know, I don't know. I don't know if AI will ever get to the point where it's, it's judgment is as acceptable as a, as a human's judgment, because even, I mean, we all disagree so much, right? It's, I don't know. It's an interesting avenue to think it, it, how could it actually replace humans? I don't know, but yeah. can it augment what we do and make our lives easier in a million ways? Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is that, you know, as humans, I don't think we're all that unpredictable. And <laughs> no. I don't think that Sorry. it will take, <laughs> I don't think it's going to take that long for AI to realize or to like, to learn what we like yeah. better than we know what we like. Yeah. And it will be able to produce things that we like, you know, way better, faster, cheaper than we can. That's because yeah. it won't have like the anxiety paralysis. It just knows <laughs> the, the information and it will do the things without all of the, the extra fluff we got going on up here. Yeah. <laughs> I, can um, I share one more example? Just another anecdote of where, yeah. where, uh, you know, in the thought of AI replacing humans a, in a lot of cases, this machine learning um, is kind of a black box and we can't always explain how it came up with what it came up with. And an example is when it was, uh, they were trying to get ChatGPT to diagnose, like, I don't know if it was moles or something to see if it was cancerous, right? And it uh, ended up getting a pretty good prediction rate, um, but they were able to determine that it was diagnosing ones that had a ruler in the picture, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it, like, and it was, and it was pretty accurate, but it was not at all useful. Like it's not yeah. generalizable, you know? Fascinating. So, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, I don't know. You may want to just avoid having a ruler around. I was going to say, yeah, that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like causation to me. From where? I'm <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, let's let's do this. Um, I know we're a little over on time, so if people need to bounce, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and uh, lots of love and gratitude for our panelists here. But let's do a, a round the table here. And I will start with Scott. <clears throat> I would love to hear your, uh, Scott, you didn't get an opportunity to share like predictions or, or trends you're excited about. So feel free to do that if you'd like. And then we'll do like a parting, you know, advice or wisdom for people who, uh, you know, things you want to challenge them to do or or encourage them to explore. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, similar to what automation has done for small businesses, I'm just excited about watching the innovation of, I mean, AI is exciting. So I'm excited yeah. about what it will do to sort of raise the bar in software specifically um, and allow humans to, there's always going to be a fear that humans are going to be replaced. But I think the, the opportunity we have is we just move our human brains to operate in higher and more valuable things. It's the same exact thing that we've seen with automation. And so, you know, what I see is specifically, I think, um, Anywhere where there's friction, right now we have a lot of user interface and software that is, it's just full of friction. You click all that kind of stuff. So I can't wait to see what happens to just reduce friction and then make it so that humans have the ability to spend their energy and their time in things that are, you know, much less, um, much less monotonous and much more valuable to their customers. And even, even things like, completely tailored responses you know like if we can look up a crm record and we know the complete history of all the notes and the communications back and forth we can tee up a response that's pretty dang close for that individual person right and i had a, I had a sales call with a company that was trying to sell me uh, on an integration into key for real-time call transcription and ai where in the middle of the call the the ai is essentially extracting the, the tasks that you want to have like anything that's been mentioned on the call i'm going to go do this you don't get off the call hit add new task da, da, da. like on the call you got a little thing it's like here's a task that was mentioned you can maybe add some notes to it and then there's a quick summary not the entire transcript which is not all that useful but a summary of the call that can be put into the notes and for periods in the call that are now bookmarked so you can easily go back to them based on the content that you want to be able to bookmark so you know that kind of stuff it's just it's really exciting what i think we can do for the business owner i think the advice i would have is um it's also similar to automation you know with automation you mentioned earlier greg you sort of have to grow a new um pair of antennas you weren't sure i was going there but grow, grow a new pair of antennas 
and start to just say, where, where can I see opportunities for this? And then just try it, you know, just go, go out. Like Brett said, don't, don't, don't be afraid of it. Go out there, start trying things. The great thing about this is really, really low barrier to entry. So, um, and then this is great. Thank you for putting everybody together. Cause I think this type of stuff will help people's minds expand and open up to it. So thank you. Well, yeah, thank you. The secret to all of my webinars is I just want to learn about this. So I, I use the the farce of hosting a webinar as an excuse for me to, to bring smart people together. And if other people benefit from it, great. I don't really care about them. This was a self-serving <laughs> endeavor here. Um, so thanks. Yeah, good advice, Scott. And thank you so much for making time for us, especially on the tail end of, uh, of some serious travel there. Um, let's go to Kevin. Kevin, any closing words of wisdom or a challenge that you want to issue for people as far as next steps or, or actions you want them to take? Uh, yeah, I would definitely, you know, again, very much like Brett, challenge people to go in there, open it up and just try it. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily business related or, you know, have some real practical purpose. Just go yeah. in there and try it. And, um, you know, I can say like my kids use it all the time. Um, for all kinds of things, the Bing, the Bing chat, right? Like it'll do pictures already, like right now for free. And so they're in there making all kinds of pictures. Some of them are a little wonky, but they like doing digital art anyway. So then they'll go and edit those pictures and stuff like that. Um, but you will find practical uses for it. Once you get used to using it and just try it a few times, you will start finding practical uses for it. Um, and then when, you know, everything else really starts coming online and all the changes and things that we're talking about now, when those things come, you'll be able to take advantage of them because you'll already know how it works. Um, awesome. Kevin, Any? For it, do you have anything you want to plug or anywhere that people can go if they want to learn more about you and what you're up to? Um, you can go, well, I, I am putting together a big adventure thing, right? So if you're yeah, sure. in the adventure, you, you know, nothing that AI can do because it's literally you out in nature doing fun stuff. Okay. Uh, coming back together in a mastermind, you can go to letsgoami.com and uh, you know, learn about how you can mastermind with a bunch of awesome people and uh, also do crazy fun things that will scare your pants off. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'll check it out. <laughs> uh, Brett, what, uh, where you want to, what do you want, what do you want to challenge people to do or any closing words of advice for them? I would say just like to sum up chat GPT is a revolutionary tool for natural language processing. That's simple to use, enables everyone to use, you know, powerful conversational AI applications. And with chat GPT, you won't face any awkward pauses in your chats unless you're chatting with a real person. That was all just chat GPT that I just did. <laughs> um, I Everyone see joke. that. I literally, I, wanted... I could tell it wasn't, it wasn't as flavorful as the real yeah. Brett. I That's wanted how to I knew. And... You're way funnier than that. That joke was lame. It was horrible. No, you my closing were, thought is reading the response that chat GPT had given you. Is that what yes, you... I said? Yeah, I, I need to give my closing thoughts in a webinar about chat GPT. Um, low barrier to entry. That's it. Just go use it. Just go yeah. do it. I, this is, the, I just love the direction things are going and probably not the first or the last time that I've been fooled by a human reciting, you know, <laughs> or taking credit for what chat GPT has done. Um, uh, you mentioned crewtracks.app is the Instagram handle for crew tracks. Anything else you want to plug either personally or professionally that's going on? Uh, if you know anyone in construction, they need yeah. crew tracks. So send them our way. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, Rob, uh, take us home, man. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say what both of them have said, you know, play with it, man. Go out, you know, do research on prompts, look up prompts online and just play with different prompts and see what you get and the responses, you know, it's a extremely powerful uh, tool and, you know, figure out how to put it into your toolbox so that you have something to use. Yeah, I feel uh, like that's my takeaway here is like, I got to put it to work for me. I'm aware of this space and i believe it's valuable and revolutionary as you guys have underscored here but i have yet to like adopt it and i to be honest i'm sort of a technology laggard in a number of ways and that was also me with zapier in 2015 i did a webinar with kelsey bratcher and i was like explain to me why i need to be using zapier and now i'm a total fanboy right and i use it left and right for all these different things and so it's a different 
different game, but a similar conversation as far as like my willingness to to jump in. Did you want yeah, to? Add- I mean, like I'm still not using it full time for things. I'm just using it every once in a while yeah. until I figure out how to slip it all in there. Right. But that's, you have to, your comfort has to start with it somewhere. Right. And like, that's how you develop that lens to spot those opportunities. And yeah, 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 totally. Well, I mean, as I say, play with it until you can break it and then put it back together. (laughs) Uh, uh, Kevin, uh, I'll come to you in just a second. Rob, uh, where can people learn more about you or what you're up to? Um, Actually the site's down right now, but newrealitymedia.com. So (laughs) newrealitymedia.com or I can attest if you find yourself passing through Squamish, he's a great guy to to share a, a coffee or a, a cider with for sure. Yep. Uh, Kev, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, yeah. So since you brought up Zapier, one of the things that I was actually hoping to get from our webinar today was a practical use for chat GPT in Zapier because it is connected now. Oh, oh and, really? So Zapier can call to it in a step or something? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I, yeah, you know, I've definitely well, seen like it's yeah. in there. I just that'll that'll be the next that'll be the next one. Yeah. yeah, that'll be the next <laughs> one, the next iteration. Okay, um, thank you all, all three of you, and special thanks to to Scott who had to jump off there. Um, this was super fun. I appreciate you all um, just immensely, and I'm grateful for our friendship and your just generous, um, you know, sharing here today. I know this information. Uh, has come at a cost of at least your own time. And so it means a lot that you're willing to just open up and and share it freely. Jade, anything I'm forgetting or anything you want to add before we sign off? No, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I I don't like to try things until other people break it first. So Hmm. this this was kind of like the nudge that I needed. Yeah. Um, All right. We will work on getting the recording processed and hosted and distributed. But in the meantime, thanks to all our panelists. Thank you to all the attendees who were on live with us, who asked questions, who contributed ideas. The chat was a bunch of fun, as it always is. I think that's all she wrote. Adios, friends. Bye. Bye. Okay, so thanks for hanging out and watching the replay of this event. Hope you found it valuable. AI is um, an exciting and innovative new technology with limitless application in general and specifically for small business. I hope that you took away some ideas from this for your own business and consider the collective call to action to give it a try for yourself. Um, If you have your own use cases that didn't come up in this webinar, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about how you're putting AI and chat GPT to work for your business. Now, this particular webinar happened to be available beyond the OG membership, but the OG membership is our private community. All of our panelists today are also OG members. So if you want to join the conversation there, you're welcome to check out the membership details and pricing at OGmembership.com. That's it. Uh, Like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.